guys, Jay here. Welcome to Models Memories Weekly, episode 91. Models Memories is a show about nothing and is filmed in front of a live studio audience. This is a show where we're talking about painting, modeling, and working experiences from the week. Now you might be thinking to yourself, Jay, you put out three YouTube videos a week. How could you possibly have more to say? Well, I do. And here goes. This week, I want to talk about the new model from Games Workshop and like tons of other stuff that I've been working on. But this model from Games Workshop really kind of stuck out to me. This year's Boxing Day miniature has a next level party hat. Oh, next to get it because he's wearing a crown and a party hat's a crown. And this this article is super cringy. I kind of like it when the articles are cringy because it's fun to read them and like make fun of them. But yeah, so this is a a alternate sculpt model for a um, soul eater, flesh eater court, a flesh eater court. What are they called? Ghoul Lords, Lord of the Ghoul. And it's a whole faction of ghoul boys, and they're probably the most forgettable faction in all of Age of Sigmar, but it's not really their fault. This model, it looks really good. For a ghoul boy, he's, he's fun, he's got a throne, he has a very fancy party hat, he's got a sword, he's got everything you would think and you would want. And it's neat that, like, you know, this is a special model that's available for a limited edition. It's their Christmas miniature. You can go to the store, you can order it special from their website for a limited amount of time. How many people are actually going to want this model? Probably a very thin slice of the Age of Sigmar community because the Flesh Eater Courts aren't that interesting right now. Although I do have some ideas of how to improve them. Agony only sets in once dessert is served and the arguments start. You know how it is, there's the usual bickering about which Mortark is best, and then Uncle Fangheart begins screeching in an inhuman tongue, his breath reeking with fighted corpse meat. The Christmas song record scratches, the walls fall away, oh gods. Yeah, so the thing about the Flesh Eater Cards is they're weird monstrous ghouls, but they think of themselves as highborn nobles. And so when they're like ripping apart a corpse and just like shoving raw meat into their mouths, they think they're fine dining with china and little salad forks and tiny binoculars. It's kind of an interesting concept, but it's a concept that could fit on like a one playing card. Like there's not a lot to them. And as cool as this model is, I think that the Flesh Eater Courts need a lot more help. So the interesting thing about the Flesh Eater Courts is that they're actually one of the few things that made its way over from Warhammer Fantasy Battles into Age of Sigmar. But they weren't the Flesh Eater Courts at that time, they were part of the Vampire Count's army. And the easiest way to explain exactly like what they were is to bring up the Lion King. So in the Lion King, right, Scar is like an asshole, but like, he thinks he's awesome. And that's what the vampires are. They're horrible, nasty people who think that they're amazing, they're the greatest thing that's ever graced the mortal realms. And of course, we all remember from The Lion King that Scar was an avid necromancer. Scar lived in the elephant graveyard because none of the other lions liked him or wanted him around. And so, you know, he would just spend his days in the elephant graveyard, resurrecting dead and bringing legions upon legions of skeletons and zombies back to life to fight his wars in the mortal realms. Obviously, we all remember this from the movie. And the Flesh Eater Courts are the hyenas. The hyenas are just kind of suck and they live at the elephant graveyard. And so Scar has brought them into his legions, but uh, he doesn't care about them at all. They're just minions, they're pawns in his grand schemes. And so that is what the Flesh Eater Courts were. When Age of Sigmar came, Games Workshop decided that they really had something with the vampires. So they sort of pushed the two factions apart. And I really do like the Soul Blight Grey Blights. They're, they're a neat faction. I love their sculpts. They came out with a bunch of new miniatures last year. And so I think that they are a solid faction. They also have like 13 units, which is pretty respectable, especially compared to the Flesh Eater Quartz six models. I mean, some of those models are dual kits, so you can build like a couple of different units out of the same box. But it's just when you, when, you know, when you don't have to hit show more or go on to page two on the Warhammer web store, it's usually a bad sign for that faction. And it's too bad because they, they're such a long existent miniature range, like Warhammer Fantasy Battles. They, they've existed for a very long time, but they just don't have the little something that they need. And right now, it's really awkward that they are kind of the same as the Soul Blight Blade Blops. Like, they even share some of the models. Both factions share the Terror Geist and the Crypt Flayers, and they both kind of have this you know, bat thing going on where they're slowly transforming into mutant giant bats. 
And so they don't feel separate enough. I think if somebody wants to dip their toes into like a death faction for Age of Sigmar that has like a vampiric thing going on, they're going to go with the soul blop blop blops because they have a lot more miniatures and their just model range is a lot more fleshed out. They probably wouldn't mind a nice scoop of the flesh eater courts, but they're a separate faction, so it's a little awkward. I think if Games Workshop really wanted to make the Flesh Eater Quartz into something cool, uh, I would suggest maybe not making just a one-off alternate sculpt model with a party hat, but instead make them a faction of Windigos. You can actually do this without changing their lore, which is very important because if there's anything Wargamers love, it's change. But you can keep the Flesh Eater Quartz, these uh, highborn nobles who have turned into feral ghouls, and just have a faction of things that go bump in the night. A faction of Windigos. Maybe some giants that have left their kin behind because they just think that they're so awesome and they've trekked out into the wilderness and have gone completely feral, but they still think that they're fine upstanding gentlemen. You could take a little bit from almost every faction, ghoulify them and have a whole faction of horrible monsters who think very highly of themselves. And I think that would be a really interesting way to make the uh, the Flesh Eater Quartz into something. Also, maybe maybe a name change because Flesh Eater Quartz and Soul Blop Leap Blops sounds a little similar. I mean, they're both, right now they're both kind of the same faction. They're vampiric monsters. But if Games Workshop really wanted to, they could, I think that they could separate them and do something really, really cool with them. This Flesh Eater Court article starts with, Ah, Christmas, a time for celebration and excess. And it's really fun that they use the word excess because like it's Games Workshop and their prices are super, super excessive. And every Christmas they offer these giant Christmas battle forces that are very, very expensive. So I thought it was really funny that they used the word excess. I think they were trying to tie it into the excess because it's kind of the idea of the Flesh Eater Courts, but it also feels like it rings very true for Games Workshop. And holy cow, are those Christmas battle forces expensive? And I bought two of them. <laughs> I was a very, very bad boy this holiday season. I got the Death Guard Battle Force and the Sylvaneth Force for Age of Sigmar. And let's let's talk about the Sylvaneth first, because the Death Guard, ah, the Death Guard. So I really like Age of Sigmar. I got to play with the Dominion box and it was really, really fun. I do like that it doesn't have as much damaging shooting as uh, Big 40k. And the rules seem just a little bit more modern because literally Age of Sigmar is a more modern game. And I was, I've been look, I, I really like all of the factions for Age of Sigmar, especially the um, factions of order, the good guys of Age of Sigmar. And, so, and I do like the Sylvaneth, but they were never like one of my top picks. But seeing this box on the shelves and thinking, I bet I could paint those up really, really well, really, really quickly made me pull the trigger. Like I've done some like challenges in the past, 24 hour painting challenge, 12 hour painting challenge, you know, paying a model in, you know, two minutes, two hours, two seconds. And I bet I can paint these up really fast. I don't know exactly the time frame. I mean, my plan is to paint everything at once, you know, get a tree bark effect with the airbrush and washes, maybe a little bit of oil paint and then very carefully pick out all of the magical spirit elements and then paint those up. And I think it would make for a really, really fun painting project. And I think I could have a Sylvaneth army like in a day. I don't know exactly how long I want to spend. Maybe you guys could help me out in the comments. Like how long do you think this box, there's a lot of models. How long do you think this box should take? I'm thinking six hours, six hours start to finish, not building, building is going to take weeks, but start to finish painting these models. I think I could get it done in six hours. Maybe less, probably not less, hopefully not more, but that's kind of where I'm leaning towards. But I think that this Sylvaneth box is going to be a really, really fun project. And I'll have another Age of Sigmar army to play with. So uh, the, the year is coming to an end, but hopefully next year is going to be the year of Age of Sigmar and 40k and Drops on Commander and Malifaux and all of the games that I've been dying to play. <laughs> but yeah, Sylvaneth Battle Force. Now, the Death Guard, on the other hand, are the exact opposite of that Sylvaneth Battle Force. These guys are going to take forever to paint because of the paint scheme that I do for them. So the Death Guard is an army that I've been slowly dipping my toes into over the past two years. It started off with a couple of those blind boxes from Space Marine Heroes Series 2 or 3, 
And you know, it's, it was just like, well, I'm not starting an I'm not starting an army, but I'm gonna, I'm just gonna buy this, and I'm gonna buy this too, and I'm gonna buy this too, and I'm gonna buy this too, and so now I have like probably almost a thousand points of Death Guard painted up, and I really like my Death Guard. They're just cool. They're neat. I I have like a weird tie dye scheme that pushed me out of my painting comfort zone, where I typically painted very heavy metal, where everything got a, a color and a wash and a highlight, but the Death Guard are just this weird tie-dye monstrosity, but it actually looks really good. And so this box came with Morty and I fear Morty. Morty, you know, a normal Death Guard guy takes me probably a few hours to paint, maybe two or three or four hours to paint because I try to do a really good job on them. Morty is like 50 Space Marines big. He's so big and impressive and beautiful and embellished. And when this box had Morty in it, I thought, maybe I do it. Maybe I just do it. Maybe I rip the Band-Aid off and just play the Death Guard. I mean, it also comes with a bunch of other Death Guard units that I wanted for the army. But Morty, there's something about him. Maybe it's just because I really like Rick and Morty. But I think I'm going to paint Morty up for Golden Demon. Because the Golden Demon has a category for large models. And Mortarian is like the definition of a large model. It's one of the biggest models Games Workshop makes. And so I'm going to try. I am going to try and do a really good job on Mortarian. And I'm going to have the coolest Death Guard army ever in about three or four years, because that's how long it's going to take me to paint all of this stuff. The exact opposite of the Sylvaneth. For the Sylvaneth, I am just ready to rock and roll. The Death Guard, I'm a little nervous about. It's a huge time commitment, and I do like the results, but I feel like I'm talking myself out of this box. I already have it. I'm going to build it and put it together. But yeah, there's not going to be a painting challenge for this. No way. This, uh, this is probably just going to be a little bit of free time on my own time. But speaking of Death Guard, that reminds me of this video's sponsor, Audible. Audible is the best place to go if you want audiobooks. When you have an Audible subscription, you get one credit a month that you can put towards any audiobook you want. I've been a subscriber to Audible for years and years. Actually, this month, I spent my Audible subscription on the book The Lord of Silence by Chris Wright. It is a book all about the Death Guard, and it is 10 hours and 10 minutes long. So that means that I'll probably be able to get two and a half Death Guards finished in that time. I, I love listening to a Warhammer book because I, I like to get in the Warhammer zone, like watching and not just make a painting video while listening to a 40K audiobook while putting together some 40K miniatures. It's like just way too much Warhammer, but that's that's kind of how I like to do things. If you would like to try out Audible, you can follow the links in the description below to get a 30-day free trial and one free audiobook, and it helps out the channel. But speaking of the Death Guard and Warhammer 40k, this week I got to play Warcry, which is the Age of Sigmar version of Kill Team. And it was really fun! I, I, like, I knew it would be good, I've heard nothing but good things about the game, and I love Kill Team. And Warcry is very similar to Kill Team, it has some differences. It's a different game, but it feels very similar, you have about 10 models per side, you're fighting in a skirmish, you have these objectives, but plays pretty differently, actually, especially because there's almost no shooting, although there actually was a lot of shooting in this game because I was playing the Boner Boys, the Ossiarch Bone Reapers, and Nick was playing the Caradron Overlords. And so all of the Caradron Overlords have like little pistols and some guns that actually can do some decent damage, but it was really fun. And actually we were playing a really fun mission where Nick got to know so we put six objectives on the board and then Nick had to secretly choose one to be the real objective, the objective that wins the game. And my job, and I didn't know which objective was the winning objective, my job was to capture the winning objective and hold it at the end of the game. And Nick's job was to make sure that that doesn't happen. And since Nick knew and I didn't, it led to a really fun back and forth of like me trying to like psych him out and being like, so that you just shot at that guy. Does that mean that that is the real objective or were you just messing with me? Uh, like, really great objectives like that make for a lot of fun. A lot of the times, kill team can turn into just kill, 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 activate, shoot, activate, shoot, activate, shoot. Where often in Warcry, I was trying, I was a lot of movement. I really like good movement in miniature war games. Um, I'm really excited to try, I would love to give the new 30k game a try. The new 30k game a try. The 30k a try because you can do like these reactionary actions, which can give you more movement than you would typically be able to do in like a game of 40K. And I don't just mean movement like, oh, this model gets to move six inches, but wouldn't it be cool if it gets to move eight inches? Like I like doing extra moves in a, in the turn or in my actions. 
And in Warcry, you can spend your actions however you want, so you can do two moves if you need to, so you can get around the board a lot easier. It's, movement makes the game more fun. It makes reminds me of like a video game. In Call of Duty, you run around the map like 60 times in a two minute match, but in a game, in a tabletop war game, typically you move like 10 inches over the course of two hours. And so it just feels like the game is slow, even though really a game, uh, a tabletop war game is a game played over the course of an afternoon, but really it's probably a snapshot of two minutes of an actual war. And so I just really, I really like good movement in miniature games. And so I'm very excited to continue to play Warcry. And you can like play with almost any unit available in Age of Sigmar. The Sylvaneth are gonna be my faction of choice for now, especially when I get those suckers painted up. And I mean, I have so many, so many war, just Games Workshop miniatures. I could totally just proxy everything in the whole world, but I don't want to. I want to play the actual thing. And so once, once I recoup my losses for this incredible hobby purchase, Maybe sometime next year, I'll be able to get a couple more Age of Sigmar models to play within the game. But speaking of things I love even more than miniatures, that's right, our Patreon. Over there, we have new terrain packs available monthly. This month, we have the Wasteland Cars, ready to drive donuts around your game boards. And to new subscribers, we also have a welcome pack that includes Dawn of War inspired Space Marine, Imperial Guard, and Eldar Terrain, all hosted by Comics, Games, and Things. We also host Patreon exclusive videos where we critique our viewers' miniatures and host Discord hangouts. And we have a new tier where you can join the ranks of my Black Templar Legion, like Gabriel Valesco and Hugh Jass, the Tactical Marines. I have so much painting ahead of me. And with the Sylvaneth, very excited with the Death Guard, a little afraid, but uh, the biggest, the biggest crushing blow of all this is I have to put all these models together. Like I like building models, but it's gonna, it's gonna be weeks and weeks and weeks of building miniatures. So I better get started. Bye bye.